So hi guys, in the previous video we were able to build quite uh, complex queries in SQL combining OR and 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 using parentheses to segregate different blocks. Mind you, when you segregate in different blocks, it doesn't have to be like all the ORs in one place and all the ANDs in one place. It depends what you need to do. For instance, each block is basically like a, a, a sub-query or a sub-filter, if you wish, on its own, which then gets combined with another sub-filter, which is another block. So, yeah, look at it this way. It doesn't mean like, oh, I've got all the ORs in one place. No, it's up. You can also, a block could be a combination of, with, which give you that certain information. And that information would then be combined with further filters down the line. So that's the way, that's the way this thing uh, works. Right. Um, now what we can do is we can take it a step further and we've got the data here and now I'd like to have this data sorted. And the way to sort is use the word order and it, it is not necessary but it is a good habit to write uh, all SQL keywords or commands in capitals, in all caps, makes the code easier to read. So my personal uh, choice is always the SQL statements in capital and the, the field names in uh, lowercase. And it is especially useful when you combine um, SQL code in your other code. For instance, if you're writing Python or PHP or whatever, and that code has to send SQL, it makes it easier to read because the normal normal uh, PHP or Python code is mostly lowercase. And if you have some SQL statements in there, they're easily discernible because they are in caps. So, and also here it makes it easier to read because I, I can, I, you know, uh, because it's all caps, I can immediately see the commands and I can then easily see the fields, which are basically non-SQL commands. Right, now sorting goes like this, order by, and then what do we wish to sort by? Let's take product name, then I take product name. And then run it. And now this query basically not only filters all that stuff, but after filtering, orders everything. And we see now, because that starts with a number, is on top, and then we got somewhere once the numbers are over, we come to the A's and so on. So that is like order. If you need to, to order by descending order, for ascending order, you don't have to write anything. But for descending uh, is the DSC. And some other databases could be DSC without the E. So you have to look at what, uh, how your data, but most of them, all of them I know use order by. And uh, now if we run that, that would uh, sort the data in a, this, or basically the data by product name in a in a in a descending order and you see here we have a lot of nulls and then we come to uh, zero so basically here again uh, you see that's that is that's what i say is like uh, <clears throat> working with databases like uh, is always a journey of discovery and you always find things like here now i know this product name is null and uh, let's assume i'm building a database and this is the sort of um, data for uh, sorry i'm building a website i'm building a website and this is the data for my website this is pretty useless so i need to filter further so here i would then have to say and product product name is not null because you know showing this on a website is is pathetic or or you know it's even embarrassing so you know just filter that off and then clarify uh, internally, if you're working in a company, it's often like this. You have a database which is very intolerant of certain things. I mean, if you don't have a product name, you know, what's the use of that row? You know, I can't do anything like, like this row. What am I going to start with this row? What does this quantity apply to? You see, so here again, uh, you know, that is useless for my website. So, you know, filter it out. And then if, if we're talking about, I mean, this is here open food facts. I'm not affiliated with them. I don't care. If that's a company I'm working in, I have to clarify, hey guys, 
this can stay like this clarify that as long as that's not clarified it's not showing up on the website you know if this is a product this product is not showing on the website because you guys have to put a product name so that's why always with databases always um, you're always modifying your queries you're always and it depends on, on what are your queries for are they for testing are they for a website you know so that's why it is always a very dynamic process. I always say like database is sort of a journey of exploration. And that's what we're doing here. We're, we're finding always new things and adding new filters and now let's run that query. And now we should have, uh, yeah, a better found set. Now we don't, at least we don't have null product names because that's pretty useless. Right, so that is one way of, 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 uh, of querying things. Now, often is like this that we'd like to find what is what is in uh, in that specific column so let's say i'd like to know what is what kind of content do we have in countries okay so let's go and just delete everything countries and that and we don't need that right and so select so now we're only showing one column basically this column let's run that and here we got the data. Now here we notice that I'm getting France, for instance, multiple times, even EN France or yeah, multiple times and so on. How can I get each one just once? There's a, another keyword which is called distinct. And as far as I know, it works in every database. It works in SQL Server, it works in Postgres, it works in, uh, in SQLite. And this is distinct. Now, Select distinct means now I should get each just once. Because here I'm seeing one, France, one, two, three, four, and further down the line as well. This one here, all these repetitions, they will go away with the word distinct. Let's try it out. And you see now, I can widen the column. You see now we have each one we see only once. Okay, we only each see once, there's no repetition anymore. But we also notice, and that's what I, again, I reiterate myself like, um, I repeat myself like, you know, it is always a, a, um, a journey of exploration because now we see here, for instance, w previously we searched for United States. Now here we find that sometimes United States is not on its own. Here it is with, I think that's Sweden and USA. Here's written as USA, here's with Israel and United States. So you see now here's the United States and Germany. So you see uh, often that United States is not on its own. And our previous query had United States on its own. So we're, we were missing a lot of other stuff. Now, how do I get that? Now, let's, let's, let's try it out here. If I say, now remember that we had like here and here, and let's try our filter from back then we had this filter and that searched for United States USA uh, you you know you dot s dot a dot and let's try it and you see we only have one because we're just getting you know with this thing however we're missing out on the ones we saw, Israel, United States, Svirge, uh, USA, and so on. So we're missing out on these. Now, how do, I, how do I get these? The reason we're missing out on them is because we're seeking for exactly that. We're seeking for exactly that. We're seeking for exactly that. Now, uh, let's comment. You can also uh, comment in Postgres. You can comment it like this, and then you'd have these. Or you type them yourself. Let's try another word, where countries, and there comes the keyword like. Now like is, hmm, I'm not so sure. Here you're saying, oh, I'm very sure it's gotta be United Space States, and that's it. Or I'm pretty sure it's gotta be USA, no dots, or here you're saying, you, you know, you know exactly what you want. Sometimes you don't know that. You know, as we saw previously, let me just uh, comment that out as well and run it just to get everything again. You can see here, hmm, 
sometimes it's USA, sometimes United States, but often it's not alone, you know? So how do I cover these cases? Well, that's where we use the word like. And like, when you use like, you got to use it with wild cards. Now, what's a wild card? A wild card is basically just a placeholder. And there are two wild cards in, uh, in Postgres. Let me put them behind the comments so they don't bother us. You've got the percent is the first wild card we have. And the percent is a wild card for X numbers or characters. So basically, let's take, let's take United States. Oops. Now, I don't know where United States is. Is it at the front, at the back? I don't know. So you put this wild card before and after, uh, sorry, and before and after the word. And that means now I'm looking for rows where United States is either at the front, in the middle, or the back. I don't know. I don't care. Main thing, it's in there somewhere. And if we run that, and you see now we're getting way more, with this one alone, we had just one. Now here we're getting, here is at the back, here is in the middle, even twice, and so on. So this is the word like, and the wild card is this. This, this means that I don't care how many, things are in front. I don't care how many things are at the back. I need that. Okay. And, and that, and that, that it, it looks for this string, if you wish, anywhere in those. And that's, that's exactly what we're getting here. And now if we do the same thing with the others, so, or, and then countries like, and then again, percent USA percent and now you always get you also get not only where United States is somewhere anywhere in that field in that field countries but also USA and let's run that right and now we see now we're getting not only uh, where where United States is but you should be getting where USA is for instance this one here and so on so that is how, and we can obviously uh, cover that contingency here as well for those people who input uh, a dot. But mind you, I don't have to put the A dot. I don't have to put the dot here behind the A because that's covered by the wildcard character. So I just need to cover that. And then if I run that, then I've got... I've got at least all possibilities of the United States uh, covered. I can also, and that's, that is sort of the way you, you do professional queries. You know, some people just write US, something like that. And then I have to do the wild cards, obviously. So I got, this way I got all possibilities covered. And that's, that's the whole point of the, um, of the, of the query right so you see here um the way we work with databases is we gotta explore a lot that's why distinct is often useful distinct is often useful also if i wish to um to uh, let's say i have a website and this website has a drop down and in this drop down it's going to have all the countries in this database then i need distinct as well because i need every entry in that drop down it's going to be just once so um, that's that's one way of doing things, right? Uh, the other wildcard character in Postgres is the underscore, and as far as I know, it is it is the same thing for SQLite, and it is the same thing for SQL Server. I am not so sure with MySQL. I think there they use the asterisk for any uh, placeholder. I'm not sure. I don't. I, I hardly use MySQL or MariaDB for that, for, that, for that matter. But this is a placeholder for one. And uh, for instance, uh, we can try something like this. Let's say we're countries like, um, 
yeah let's 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 look for something like that so i am looking for france but let's say i need to cover um all types maybe some some misspellings of france maybe some people wrote france with an a franca or something like this so that i would use that placeholder and that would then get me all um uh F, R, A, and C entries plus whatever character. Let's see if I get anything beside France. Uh, actually, no, I just get France. But, you know, you understand the way it goes now. So you can cover things either with a single character wildcard, which is basically the underscore that just uh, applies to one character. And you can use the wildcard for multiple characters, which is the percent. And that would give you then totally different results. So you can play a lot with these two wildcards, especially in, in real world databases where you don't know or you're not so sure that it is stuff is entered correctly. You know? So let's let's try for instance another one, just for the fun of it. Yeah, but let's try this one here. That you should get more if I try United. And uh, yeah, let's try United and percent at the front then and yeah let's try it out you see these are all the entries with united in them and if you just need united at the front as a first word you just leave the wild card at the back and run that now you should get only those entries where united is the first word and then whatever you see and that's so for instance, there was the United Arab Emirates. You don't see that here because that United in Arab Emirates wasn't, wasn't as a first word. So that's why you don't get it. And you see here now, for instance, United States is also written with a hyphen. So again, this is something we didn't cover here in our contingency. So again, that's something, or look at that. So as you see, the whole thing with databases is, especially databases, uh, big ones, it is always discovery and that's why with distinct you can really get down to really pinpoint stuff and see stuff like that and then you know modify your queries to reflect those facts because often in databases because often databases are filled by automatically by certain systems either a lot of people are filling them up or certain other software is filling the database up so one has to you know plan for these contingencies that's why exploring the data before you know doing any queries is very important because here you can see now i mean obviously i need to cover also you know this this here is not enough i'd have to cover one with a hyphen i'd have to cover this one so it is a very very let's try this one again maybe we can get some more instances where uh, united states and that's just one country uh, is, is written in so many different uh, forms and here we see and so sometimes we have something like that so it is it is it is amazing the the kind of stuff that you see and um that is why it's very important to discover look at this one here this is even in french you know so um it is very important to discover what kind of data is there for you to plan decent queries so you can get you can extract everything possible out of that data that you need